hello everyone, welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenron. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well being to watching every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to us in some form or another, and hopefully English because neither one of us understands Japanese. Uh, starting with our main uh, series being Gintama and the series that we keep saying we're going to get back to, but we never have enough time to actually watch all the episodes, Kuriko's Basketball. <laughs> it never seems to come to fruition. There's so many episodes to watch, but it's a, it's a good arc that we need to talk about, so I want to have due diligence <laughs> to make sure it's as perfect as it can be. But today we're going to be talking about Gintama. That's right, we're finally back after such a long-ass time. And not only that, this is technically releasing on my birthday, so it's like this is the special uh, birthday episode, even though your yours already passed, so this doesn't count as a special birthday episode to use then, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> only yeah. for me. Yeah. Only for me. This one's uh, dedicated to me. I was going to make the joke saying I'm one step closer, but I forgot that your birthday happens first. <laughs> so we're on even keel. We're on perfect standings for anyone who is interested in the who gets taken out first poll between me and Zen. Just know that you can't use age as a factor. So what are we going to be talking about today after I'm done talking about that? Uh, we're going to be talking about episodes 221 to 226, which is the the Jugen arc, two, episode, two random episodes, and then the Jail arc, which is another tiny arc here at the end. Zen... Why don't you get us started first with episode uh, 221, which is just called Jugum. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to lie to y'all. I zoned out really hard in these episodes, so I'm going to give just the briefest plot summary on Earth. Um, yes. Kyubei's family gets a monkey from the Shogun, and they're like, I want you to train this monkey, because I, I think it's the kid. The kid wants the monkey to be a pet, and so they need to train him to be a good monkey pet. And so... Uh, Kyubei's like, hey, we need to name him because we have no name for him. And he keeps throwing shit at Gintoki all the time. That's like, he just keeps doing that. And then uh, they keep na like giving him terrible names. And so they end up giving him this really long name that is a play on Jugemu, the Rakugo play, where it's his name is like Jugemu, Jugemu, and it's so long. And the joke in the play is I think it's that he's like drowning or something. Yes. <laughs> um, and it takes so long to say his name that he dies. Because they can't say his name like quickly enough to save him from drowning, um, and they make a, a version of that for the monkey, but it's just like random words. It's like Jugem Jugem, shit thrower, Shimpachi Chan's awful old underwear. Like uh, it, it's yeah, just the, a bunch of words. The 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 full official English name because there's a difference between the more romanticized uh, Japanese name and the English translation is Jugem Jugem shit tossing of Shin Chan's two day old underwear of Shimpachi's life ball mong. Fizzlong, Isaac Schneider, one third pure love, two thirds hangnail anxiety, betrayal knows my name, or does it really ignore? Call squid, dogfish, halibut, trout cod, dogfish. This is a different dogfish. I'm talking about the dogfish. Shark, Kaluga, angler, ray, yulo, mio, mikio, pepe, 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 uh, this gets added later. All's well that ends well, runny diarrhea. Yes. The full name. Uh, and so that's the name that they go with, um, and then she's, like, training it by wearing a mask that looks like Gintoki, so it trains him to throw poop at the mask. Because he likes to throw poop at Gintoki. Apparently, we get, uh, every monkey thinks that Gintoki is just a walking toilet. Uh, yeah, so he, like, gets attacked. But I think that might be in the next episode. I don't remember. Yeah, it is but, in the um, next episode. Yeah. Um, and then the guy who's obsessed with Kyubei is very mad uh, about the monkey. But then he's like, yay, it's time to give the monkey back. Yay for me, but it's going to make Kyubei sad. But then Kyubei's like, that's okay. Um, I'm happy to return the monkey, but she's obviously actually um, heartbroken that the monkey has to go away. Uh, and then they they go to give the monkey back to the, the Shogun. And she's putting on a tough face to hide the, the sadness of monkey loss. Yeah. And then uh, this is where the episode ends, and it ends with a title card that says, the name was too long, and now this is a two-parter. 
<laughs> which maybe is actually the funniest joke is that they're committal to this extremely dumb bit, which I will admit I like, but it's a very dumb bit, has caused them to turn this episode that would be a one-part story into a two-parter. Yeah, it, it put me to sleep pretty hard. Um, yeah, I'll, so I'll let Zen go first, because you really did not like this episode, or the, these two episodes. It's not that I didn't like it, it's that I just absolutely was like, ugh. You get it. Uh, yeah, I was very tired by the end of it. Um, it did have a couple bits that I thought were funny. Mm-hmm. Um, really the only ones that I thought were particularly funny. Maybe I didn't find the Jugemu thing funny because I already knew the joke. Like, I knew what it was talking about, like, referencing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I didn't find that bit funny. But um, the part where he throws the shit at Gintoki, and they're like, oh, he didn't like the name. But then um, <laughs> Otai gives him a name, and he throws shit at Gintoki again, and they're like, oh, he liked the name. And Gintoki's <laughs> like, so he just throws the shit either way? <laughs> he's happy or not? I thought that was funny. And then I thought after uh, when Shinpachi's like, we need to give him a name that flows better. That one sucks. It needs to be more fluid. And Tagger goes, so runny diarrhea instead of shit? <laughs> and he's like, no, I meant the name. But then he starts throwing shit at Gintoki again. And Gintoki's like, help, he's throwing more fluid shit than before. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, but the rest of it was really killing me. All right, fair enough. Uh, I did like the dedication they have for this monkey shitting throwing bit. Because I would think after a while, I was like, well, it's just someone who's throwing shit. But for some reason, I really find it funny for a monkey. I think it really it comes down to how much I love <laughs> monkeys that I will watch a monkey throw shit at Gintoki. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> go for it, monkey. <laughs> go, monkey, go. Um... I ended up liking this episode. I had no idea what was going on with the name at all. So when they started putting down the name, I was like, okay, yeah, long name. And then they revealed the long ass name. And it's like in a full on like big um, reveal as the Japanese text stroll down. And they keep saying the name over and over and over and over again. I was like, this is an an extreme joke. Especially when Shinpachi mentions it. Halfway through the name, they started playing another game. And that's why where the part where it comes up where it says, like, uh, Hall- no, I mean a different... They started playing a wordplay game, which I think is the same wordplay game as the one from um, uh, that one Yu Yu Hakusho episode. Do you remember the one where they couldn't say certain words or something? No, maybe it's something different. Either way, it's a Japanese game. Either way, I thought it was funny. Um, and then, that, especially because the way that the actors deliver it every single time is pretty funny to me like the the a lot of the voice acting is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for me on this one because it's their dedication to saying the name and saying it perfectly the first time going through and then in the next episode when other characters have to say the name uh they fail completely at it and they are unable to say the name at all and it just goes to show like how um dedicated they are to saying the name here there's also a bit here that i thought was really funny where when they're having the 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 Jugame, Jugame training arc to make it a more like uh, celebrity monkey, um, they start playing this song, and halfway through the song, I realize that the lyrics are just his name, because <laughs> <laughs> they start going like Jugemu, Jugemu. Is, is this also the one where um, Kyubei paints his name like in calligraphy? And it's like an entire yard's yes. worth of paper. That was also pretty funny. Yeah, I like that part. I, I didn't realize that the song was his name until they got to the end and the singer started saying, it's also done in a really like slow, it's supposed to be an emotional song. And near the end of the song, she the singer just starts going, pe, 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 pe. And then at that point I was like, wait a minute, is this just his fucking name put into lyrics? <laughs> Uh, that part I liked, but like, like you said, <laughs> this is a very one no joke, and they hit you over that with it to an insane degree. <laughs> that yeah, either uh, there's there's some good, funny, like under understated jokes, which is funny that he's throwing diarrhea is an understated joke by this mm-hmm. episode standards. Yes, but there's like some some good, like you know, lower level stuff. Yeah. Uh, but the 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 headlining joke is just that his name is really long and really silly. Yes, and, that's and the whole thing. And how much that you can appreciate them trying to say this joke is 100% how much you're, you're ever going to be like Zen, where you're like, I get it. <laughs> Please move on. 
Or yeah, you're gonna be like, doing it for me. or you can be like me, where you're just like, yeah, <laughs> go for it, <laughs> keep yeah, going. Love that silly name, <laughs> fucking sold. And it's really funny that this is, I think, the perfect showcase of a joke. Sometimes working for some people, and then for other people's, it just doesn't work out at all. <laughs> but thankfully for Gintama, they still find a way to uh, pepper in a bunch of other jokes. So even if the main one doesn't work out, you got some good side ones on the sides. Um, I also really liked uh, uh, Kyubei's dad, who is, uh, of course, Kiryu's voice. I keep thinking of him as Kiryu because I hear the Kiryu voice when he comes out. I really liked hearing him, and he has some pretty funny lines. Like, I like that when the beginning they kept calling the celebrity. They kept they kept calling him, he's like a chemo. He goes, like, he's a chemo. And then he goes, like, okay, show me this chemo. And then it's a little monkey. And then you realize, oh, I get it, because he's a chemo monkey <laughs> that this was the whole bit here that was like it, it's it's actually just a monkey please train the monkey <laughs> so he could be a celebrity he also says at one point he's like don't call me dad call me papa like a true celebrity would and then from that point on Kyubei starts going she keeps wanting to say dad and she goes sorry papa <laughs> can you please help me um but yeah this this episode i also did like the little monkey bits where the monkeys like stare like they have like a little relationship uh, between them like Kyubei and this monkey um and i also thought it was really funny when Kyubei was training up to specifically throw shit that she put on a gintoki mask yeah and it was like a little like chibi face yeah it was like a little chibi face and when they're throwing shit she's like doing normal things and you're just perfectly dodging every single shit and not like <laughs> paying any heed to the monkey until eventually when the monkey's gonna it looks like the monkey's gonna throw shit at otai so she goes to protect her and instead it's like a little acorn and you can see that the monkey has fallen and she does the thing from planet of the apes where caesar takes over the <laughs> the main monkey colony and he shows the hand to show respect <laughs> to say that i have fallen i will now love you and I thought that was nice. And I did like the bit where the monkey... Oh, but when the, when the monkey... Zen, when the monkey... When the when she puts the monkey in the little bed. And she says we have to start learning to live apart. And the monkey is at the door. And he has his little monkey head. And he goes out to reach for her. And they go to sleep together. And they're like holding hands with the tiny monkey hands. I felt something... And it might just be because I love monkeys, but I it's felt something. It's just because you love monkeys. <laughs> it's 100%. Well, actually, there were two more funny bits that I just remembered that I thought were funny in this episode. One was when she's training the monkey, um, they're sleeping together, and he's, like, crouched over her face like he's going to shit on her, and she's got one of those paper fans, like she's going to hit him with it. That's um, right, that was, that was I good. I thought that was funny. And then Kagura's bit with... Uh, Balmung Fizalian, the oh, like yeah. Dragon Quest character that she wants to like name. The... It's not really a Dragon Quest character, no. but it looks like that. It's like an old school RPG looking character that she just makes up and she just wants to like name the monkey after him. And then the, and then it gets into that's where the Balmung Fizalian Isaac Schneider comes from. Uh, and then also oh fucking when those dudes come out and he's like uh he's doing the Hell Schneider and he has like input <laughs> frames of how to do the special. <laughs> Yeah, and then like, why does he have a command list? <laughs> he has a command list for all his moves. Oh, he's going to do the Hell Schneider. And then when the Isaac comes out, he's like, when this card comes out, return all cards back to the hand. He's like, whoa, I thought we were playing a fighting game and now we're playing a card game. Uh, yeah. This this comes up in the next episode, too, because they repeat this bit verbatim, which really makes me think maybe they really did accidentally make the episode go long because they kept repeating the name over and over again because they <laughs> the repeat the joke. Yeah, they repeated a verbatim in the next episode, but they talk about like, oh yeah, their dad, they're together, their brothers, and the whole joke is that, that they make a boy band instead of trying to stop their evil dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, I also did like the bit again where QV goes to say the name, and it's like a very heartfelt saying to say to give away Jugum. And they have to fast forward it <laughs> to make it go faster. Yeah, it even says fast forward on the screen. <laughs> yeah, fast forwarding. We need to kind of get through this. <laughs> Please go through it. So yeah, that was this episode. I think overall the main bit is going to be hit or miss for a lot of people, but there's a lot of good inner bits inside here. Um, let's finish off this monkey arc, though, and go on to the next episode, which is titled episode 222, the name reveals the person. Go ahead, Zen.
Uh, again, I kind of, yeah, kind of. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk more about it as you go through. This one. Yeah. Uh, so the monkey misses Kibe. The monkey is sad. Uh, monkey yeah. runs away from the Shogun kid. And then, like, uh, he, like, re- releases the monkeys from the zoo. So there's just, like, monkeys everywhere. Um, and Kibe's family is in, like, dire straits because the monkey ran away. So the Shogun thinks they did a bad job of training it. So they have to find it. And so the guy, I never remember his name. The guy who had the Death Note shit battle with Gintoki way yes. back when we met these characters. Kyubei Stalker. Um, guy who's a Kyube little bit... Guy, a guy yeah. too into Kyubei. Maybe just, I yes. understand, but also just but tone it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, he enlists Gintoki's help because apparently all monkeys consider Gintoki a toilet. <laughs> so if he's out there, then the the surely the monkey would not be able to resist the urge to throw shit at him. And they could catch him again. Um... So they they run and they hide in a phone booth while all the monkeys are attacking. But then um, Kagura's guy, Balmung Fazalian Isaac Schneider, or whatever the hell his name is, arrives and he starts doing his special move and he charges it up for a really long time. Because they're like, oh my god, he's going to do the the hell fucking away or whatever the fuck. Oh, that's right. Hell fucking away. Hell fucking away. Hell fucking away. He's like, then. Kakura goes, oh no, he's going to unleash the calamity of Sephiroth. <laughs> That's and, right. And Kintoki's like, oh no, somebody <laughs> stop him before he does that. Um, and he like just keeps doing it. And they're like, oh my god, he's really charging up the hell fucking away. Like over and over again. And then when he finally does it, it's just a giant pile of shit. He's also throwing shit at them in the phone booth. Yep. Um, and then Kyubei ends up catching them all. And they get back to the uh, Shogun kid, and he's like, well, how come you don't want to be my pet? Do you hate me? Do you not like me? And then Kyubei explains that, like, it's not that. It's just that, you know, life is difficult, and the monkey's your friend, and he just miss, you know, misses us. And Kyubei says, why don't you say the monkey's name with me? And they, they say the long fucking name for the monkey again. Um, okay. And then the kid, I think just gives up trying it's this is again this is 100 percent on the voice actors on here cube no selling it going perfectly saying jugum's name and the kid voice actor going jugum uh yeah uh-huh and then like i use I, every I, other... I think the name he calls him at the end he's like juga bbb diarrhea barf yeah it's like completely wrong <laughs> but what when cube is doing different. When Kibe's doing the whole list, that kid was fucking killing me because he was, like, going, yeah, because he does it on a delay because he goes, like, he hears what she has to say. He's like, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Renny Dyer, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he keeps looking at the, the monkeys who are also staring dead eye at them. <laughs> and then I think that eventually they uh, they give the monkey back to, to Kibe and they get to be friends forever. Yeah, they do. So she gets to keep uh, good old uh, Jugem from here on out. So it's a happy ending for everyone involved. Uh, how did you feel about this one, Zen? It was fine. It, yeah. Same as the last one. I was kind of like, oh, man. I, I, I knew <laughs> what they were going for. I knew there was going to be an emotional Gintama moment where they're like, hey, baby monkey. That's, and I'm like, I'm not falling for it this time, buddy. <laughs> you made the name too long for me. Yeah. This one and the prison ones that we're going to talk about later, I was like, yeah, this is a this is a red flag a mile away that you're going to try to, <laughs> to Gintama me here. Yeah, I can, uh, I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew when it was coming up for the other one, too. Uh-huh. Um, uh, from, but it was, it was all right. Yeah. Uh, the thing I liked about uh, this one is, again, I like monkeys, so I like the bit where all the monkeys are out. There's a really good shot of when they're doing the emotional uh, moment where all the monkeys are staring at them, <laughs> and there's just a monkey shot of a bunch of monkeys looking at them, which I thought was really funny. Um, obviously, the the Schneider bit where there's like they're stuck in a phone booth, and he comes out, and they he does this whole thing where he does his command code, and he does it, and then his brother comes out, and then his brother starts throwing shit at them. And then the reason that they showed up is that um, uh, Katsura found it. He's like, I found who you were looking for. The whole bit is that while they're in the... Um, the phone booth, they keep saying, like, oh, we'll call your your friends, and they'll go looking for Jugum. Just tell them what it looks like. And then they have, like, scenes of them talking to everyone, and they're like, okay, his full name? And then they go to them and goes like, okay, yeah. 
Uh huh. And they get like the name wrong in a bunch of different ways, which is, I assume, a reference back to the play of when he's drowning and no one's helping them. Um, and they do a, the the bit. The only thing that they can all agree on is that eventually they keep asking. So, what's the status of Shimpachi's underwear? I'm sorry, say it again. When did he? When did he shit himself? <laughs> And they go, like, I think it was two days ago. It was, like, it wasn't two days ago. So it was, like, I think it was today. It's tomorrow. It's, like, just assume that the pants are always on there. And the Shinfachi's at the end. He's, like, that was terrible. Nobody knew the damn monkey's name. And I'm, the only thing people cared about was asking me about my goddamn underwear. This is such a stupid idea. Uh, but the idea is that Katsura found the monkey. He's, like, I found who you're looking for. Yeah, Schneider. Because in the name of the monkey is Schneider. So they brought in the actual, <laughs> the the two characters from uh, Kagura's story. That's how they showed up. So Katsura brings the first one, and then Hasegawa brings the second one. And when Hasegawa brings the second one, when he joins in and starts singing and they do his bit where he's like, oh yeah, I start singing, they sing their song, he starts th throwing in his shit. They cut to Hasegawa and he's like, and now Hasegawa's throwing shit at us too? <laughs> <laughs> and the Hasegawa thing was killing me because they don't reveal how they got the shit out of them. It's not like their pants are down. They just seem to have an unlimited supply of shit on hand at any given time, uh, which I thought was funny. Uh, and yeah, in general, I thought it was okay. I like the little monkey. I like Kyube, so it was a nice little distraction for me here. I liked the bit with Schneider when he showed up, especially when everyone started just saying it was really funny in both episodes. I was kind of more into when they brought in the Schneider character. They started just like talking about this random ass side tangent out of fucking nowhere between Balmung, Felzin, and Isaac and his hell thing. And then like you said, they talked talk about he's going to bring the calamity of Sephiroth and Kentucky's reaction of, oh god, we can't let that happen. <laughs> Anything but that. Yeah, like, oh no, we can't let him start the calamity of Sephiroth. Yeah, that would just be so bad. Um, I also like that the kid named, um, Jugum in a very kid way, and he called him Goku. Yeah. It's maybe the most kid way of naming someone, uh, which I thought was very cute, especially at a certain point, they start talking about, like, we need to find Goku so he can throw shit at Kintoki. <laughs> also, this is the, maybe the most abuse that Kintoki has taken, and he has done the least amount of anything. He just, like, was chilling out acting all happy he serves the, like no purpose in this other than to get shit on by the monkeys yeah which makes it just that much funnier he's like he's not doing anything he's like your only purpose here is that we think that you look like a toilet for the monkeys and he's just like i don't want to be here man <laughs> this seems unfair i wasn't involved in the naming of the goddamn monkey i'm just here <laughs> i'm here to get shit on which is uh the kentucky story so there you go that's the end of the juga mark and now we will move on episode 223 which is uh oh whoop excuse me long name uh the man's household situation is hard his heart is soft that's not what they called it on crunchy roll uh yeah sure it's close enough <laughs> Mid mi middle-aged men's domestic affairs though mostly hard their hearts are soft parentheses weak that sounds more like it yeah, so this one, um, the leader of the Shinsengumi, the Matsudaira guy, mm -hmm. uh, Katsura is trying to, like, take him down, and so he uh, becomes, what's his girl name? Is it just Zura? No, it's not, because he has a whole bit about, like, I'm not Zura. He does the whole bit of Zura at the beginning, where he's like, I'm not Zura. I forgot the name of it, too. It's, like, a female name, but it's also not his female name when he's with the, um the cross-dressing group so yeah. I, I could not remember it but he's here as a unnamed woman yeah and then um so he's like i'm gonna infiltrate his house and learn a secret to take him down. um yeah zarako yeah um and so he's like becomes a maid in the house and um he like it's matsudara's daughter's birthday um, and he starts, like, feeling bad <laughs> for the family because the dad is, like, distancing from the daughter, and he's like, what's going on here? Um, and then at the daughter's birthday party, terrorists uh, attack, and they take everyone hostage. Um, and then they're like... And, and this is like a Die Hard parody, right? Pretty close. I would say it's, yeah, uh, okay. it's, it's basically Die Hard. 
felt like Die Hard because he's like going through the vents and he's like he's already in there trying this because apparently he's a badass. I don't remember him doing anything before this. To be fair, Monster has not done anything except for hang out with the Shogun and do the Mayo 13 bit where they tried to break up his daughter's boyfriend. But he himself has not done anything yet. But he has used he has been threatening. But they have, they, but I think it's a similar case of Kondo where he's supposed to be a threatening figure, but every time we ever see him, he's like a dumbass. Yeah, but apparently he's pretty good because he, he does a lot of shit in this one. Yeah. Um, and so he gets in there and he's like sneaking in and he gets a call from his assistant who I refer to as Shinsengumi Shinpachi because that's his <laughs> only job in this episode is just to be Shinpachi where there is not one. Um, yeah, fair. I mean, he's the guy with the glasses who goes, what? That's crazy. Every time someone does something <laughs> silly. Um, and so they're going to like help him. And so he's like, oh, you have a, I have a thing in here that you can use to track their location. And it's like a little map that shows all of them. And they're like all ice cream cones. And then he's like, wait, is this icon me? Is that shit? And he's like, no, it's ice cream without a cone, but it's meant to be shit. <laughs> and then um, he's like, all right, so look at the ice cream cones. And every time their cone tip turns... Um, that's when they're looking that way. So you got to wait for all the cone tips to turn away. And then once all the tips are turned, you can go up. And then the assistant's like, can you stop saying tip? <laughs> you stop saying tip? Um, and then uh, one of the cones breaks away from the ice cream, which is how the system apparently tells the difference between terrorists and their, their, their poopy underpants. Uh, there's a lot of poop in this week's episode. A lot of, a lot of shit. Um, yeah, and so then they, they go up there, and they... Uh, because he, like, blew up the water main to the building, um, and so uh, they they were all like, oh, no, they don't have a... they don't have a place to to go to the bathroom, so they're all running down. So Matsudaira went up, because they all, like, evacuated, because they had to go take a shit. Mm-hmm. Um... And the, the lead terrorist is there, and he's got a knife on Matsudaira's daughter. And then uh, Matsudaira's like, you know what? Uh, all my job as, as a father is to praise her when she does well, scold her when she does badly, and provide money for the family. That's all, that, that, that's all my role is, uh, because people don't need fathers or whatever. Um, and so he punches the guy out and saves the daughter. And then Matsudaira and uh, Zirako are, like, talking to each other. Um, and then Matsudaira reveals that he knew it was Katsura all along. And then Katsura kind of gives him, like, an acknowledgement of, like, we're, we're worthy adversaries. And then uh, the episode ends. Yeah. <clears throat> that would make Matsudaira the first ever in the entire history of the Shinsengumi to realize that Katsura was in disguise. <laughs> yes, I think literally the first person. Any, at any point. At any point, because that has been the, the joke for these many... Ep- We've talked about it and made fun of how often the Shins and Gooby are unaware that Katsura isn't among them. Because he puts on the world's shittiest disguises and barely even disguises the fact that he is Katsura. And they are unable to tell it's Katsura. Matsudaira, though, you can tell he's different. Because he's able... He knew. When Katsura revealed his name at the beginning of the episode, he was actually paying attention and realized, okay, that's actually Katsura. <laughs> Because at the beginning, when they do the the bit with uh, Izaraku, he's like, "My name's Izaraku." He's like, "Uh, I'm sorry, it is what again?" He's like, "Is is?" He's like, "Is it Zara?" It's like, "It's not Zara. It's not Zara." And then eventually, he says, "Like it's Katsura." He's like, "Cause he goes like, oh, I'm sorry, Izaraku." He's like, "It's not Izaraku. It's Katsura." I was like, "What? No, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> you were right the first time." Um, yeah, the I ended up liking this episode. I thought it was a very weird set of characters that we put together, but it did kind of make sense for a standalone Katsura. It's been a while since we've had just a Katsura-themed episode, I think. Yeah, um, it has been, for sure. Yeah, so I enjoy uh, checking out with Katsura, seeing what he's doing. And I also like that a lot of the times, it's a lot of his like viewpoints usually being skewed in some way. So in this case, he's this is him with his actual legitimate enemy that he knows that has to he has to be brought down if he has any hope to, of his patriots to kind of win. But he's also having like a slight respect towards him, which is showing how different he is from a lot of the other 
um, terrorist groups in Japan trying to accomplish the same thing as them is that they're unable to see Matsudaira for what he actually is. And he can actually see the threat that he actually legitimately is. And so, uh, I thought it was a good episode in that kind of regard. There was a lot of shit humor. I'll say, I'll give that much. They, I think they lose me a little bit in the middle. <laughs> so at some point with the ice cream cones, I got lost just a little bit. But then they yeah. got me, they get me back by the end. When he's, when he comes back and he actually is able to catch them. Um, and he does punch the shit out of that guy at the end. Yeah, he like punches him through a wall. It's pretty cool. Yeah, he is. Uh, it was pretty cool to see. And I also did like when the explosion happened and he goes in there. He's like, okay, when I saw the man, <laughs> the man I saw at the house was the weak man of a of a downbeat husband. And now I see the strong back of my enemy. Because <laughs> he goes back to uh, go fight him. He's like, that's the man who has been uh, put the fear of God into us. That's who I'm actually here to see. It was cool to see. Um, and yeah, and I like that bit at the end where there was, there's just an acknowledgement of just like, okay, you know what? He helped. So I'm going to let this one slide. But the next time we see each other, it's fucking on. And I want you to know that. <laughs> and he's like, you got it. So how'd you feel? It was good. Yeah, it was fine. It was one of those ones where it's, it's a little weird. Because, um, like, I don't know. I, I, I get the the message being like sometimes fathers feel unappreciated but then it never like resolves that really it's just kind of is like yeah he just keeps doing stuff he's unappreciated that's how it is he's just gonna like, forever oh. stay unappreciated yeah i was like oh okay well that's fine is yeah there's no uh, moment where him and his daughter like acknowledge each other. but the i think closest they... is just her wearing the hairpin that, yeah. that he got her but and, they, there's and the never un- a point where he's like oh because what does katsura say he's like even though he's destined to feel unwelcome in his own home. <laughs> like, I was like, damn. It is a little sad, but you can see that he still appreciates the little things. Like, the gift he gets at the end is from his daughter, and it's the underwear that he's cleaning up at the end. That he refuses to let the other maids to kind of... To, real, to be real, this is a really sad picture of Matsudaira's life. Yes, it sure is. It's it's, uh, it's sad out here to be to be a dude sometimes, and I appreciate that someone's out there trying to show the sad sad life <laughs> of fatherhood. <laughs> yeah, that... it was uh, it was something that's for sure. Yeah, and, uh, I also did like the bit where he's bringing he keeps bringing a door everywhere with him at the beginning the beginning bit, and then when he goes to go dress up for the party, he says like, "All right, I'm here," and he comes in a tux because he's a dude. And then he goes like, uh, sorry, sir, you're not dressed up. You're only actually half dressed up. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, it's the tuxedo, right? Don't worry, I brought a dress with me. And he changes doors to have one door that was painted with a, with a dress on it. It's like, sir, you are completely disregarding the issue that we have with you currently. <laughs> it's the it's the Katsura headspace that I love to, to hear and talk about what I've missed so much. That's episode 223. Let's move on to episode 224. Which was blue and red ecstasy. Um, good luck explaining this one, Zen. I feel like this yeah, is a my best. Uh, yeah. So he goes to this secondhand store. I think it's the same pawn shop <laughs> he usually goes to. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's trying to pawn off the VHS player because no one has one. Um, and so he doesn't need it anymore. And then she's like, "I do have this Blu-ray player," and he gets all excited because he's like, "Aren't Blu-rays even better than DVDs?" Um, <laughs> and so he gets the Blu-ray player, but it's covered in like, like, like I, I don't remember if it's caution tape or if it's like talismans, like warding towel. I don't remember what it is, hmm. but it's covered in like, obviously this is bad stuff. Um, and then there's also a disc stuck in it and the disc says a uh, cursed oh, Blu-ray man. disc. And then Gintoki trips and accidentally pushes the disc in and it's like a parody of the ring where there's this like woman in there. Um, and then she's like, actually I'm an angel. I was created to destroy all the electronic systems on planets, but he went broke. So he had to pawn me off at a pawn shop. Uh, and then he, she just keeps doing like progressively more unhinged things, uh, like ripping her wings off and like hanging herself. Uh, and then they're like, all right, let's just change the channel. But then she's on every channel. And so he ends up putting a Blu-ray player onto his scooter and using her as, like, a GPS. Um, But then she just keeps trying to kill him. 
by like making him drive off cliffs and she like gives a story about how like uh she had an abusive boyfriend and they do the domestic violence joke in this one which is pretty <laughs> funny um and then they like fly off the the like a cliff side and he's like oh no i'm gonna die and then it ends and there's like no follow-up to this at all it's the most <laughs> random fucking episode on the planet it, it, it ends real ra- it, it, yeah i was really near the end i was like how are they gonna bring this one home and the answer is they just are not gonna bring this one home <laughs> This one just kind of ends. Uh, it just, with this ends. One. It just yeah. kind of ends, and they'd never address it again. Yes, and th- 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 yes, <laughs> that, that's the best way that I can understand of this one is that they just kind of do it that way. So, uh, first of all, I'll say this much: Gintoki talking to this girl reminded me of I knew a girl who was kind of like this one, and I that's feel like that. Definite. That that really impacted a lot of the stuff of enjoying this episode. It's very hard to be like, yeah, this kind of reminds me of someone. But in a way that's not like, it's not that the fact that they were super into self-harm. It was the fact that they were super into, they were uh, not into self-harm. That's a terrible way of saying it, excuse me. They were self-harming, but then at the same time, they were also extremely manipulative. And... That's what was Gintoki's dealing with, and that's what a lot of the humor comes from, I think, is the idea that he's being, uh, dealing with someone so manipulative, but then when I was watching the episode, all I could think of were bad vibes. So this is one of the ones where I'm just like, it didn't really work for me, and so that's kind of unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, the vibes weren't good. Uh, mm. They were not good. Th- they was, weren't there. Yeah, you know, feel free. Uh, feel free specifically if you are, are a lady of some kind to tell me how you feel about this episode. Because I don't know. I feel like when she starts talking about like I'm, uh, I'm like a used slut. I was like, this is going into a direction. I don't know. Maybe I'm just feeling uncomfortable, <laughs> and this isn't really the. It was... Well, we went from like uh, poopy underpants episode to like. Uh, I'm a victim of domestic violence, and I'm gonna hang myself. And I burned myself to death with my silly heater table. I'm like, Jesus, Christ, what the whiplash is right now? It, it's a pretty, it's a pretty rough whiplash. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Going on. And I'm not anti uh, hanging yourself humor. <laughs> I just feel like it, it got too depressing, <laughs> and I just couldn't. Yeah. I just couldn't enjoy it. I think the one bit that was kind of funny though was when she said she was ready to katatsu. She's like, finally, my boyfriend had brought me a gift. But in actuality, because it, it smelled so good, it wasn't actually a gift. It was my burnt wing <laughs> cooking on the side, and I burned to death in the katatsu. <laughs> it's the fact that her wing smelled so good to her, because I was like, I guess an angel wing would kind of smell like chicken. But overall, yeah, this one just had... The the vibes were just all over the place and wrong. Um, and it, outside of that beginning bit where she's trying to get the katatsu through the TV... And there's a bit where Kagura's like, I'm going to go help her. He's like, Kagura, she's in the TV. How are you going to help her? She's like, she's going to cry. Okay? It looks like she's having a really tough time. I thought that was the most realist moment where they were just like, man, I just kind of feel bad for her. (laughs) You can tell that she's really struggling with this right now. (laughs) Um, But yeah, other than that, very, I I don't know how to feel. It was definitely one of the ones where I'm just like, yeah, probably probably not for me. (laughs) I think that's fair to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't really doing it for me. It was fine. It was just kind of weird. Yeah, you know, it's kind of weird. I, I would be very interested to hear from someone who really liked this one to to kind of go for it. Because I typically I would like something like this because this is like a parody of like Ring or Ringu, depending on how you want to say it. So I'm usually down for any kind of horror movie parody stuff, and I uh, just wasn't you know wasn't feeling it for that specific part. Not even GPS humor, and I can find some pretty good. Um, laughter and gps humor and it just wasn't working out for me in that way either um so yeah let's move on to the next episode that might be the quickest we've ever gone off an episode yeah, yeah there's just really not not much rose to say on this one uh, uh so it's better for us just to move on and we'll go on to episode 225 which has maybe one of my favorite titles in that it's and so in the second season of prison break they've already broken out of prison but the name works once you realize that society is a prison <laughs> if, if it just feels like you know he just had Pretty some good. shit to say about prison break he's like you yeah. know what let me talk about the show called fucking Prison Break. <laughs> pretty good. It's the first two seasons, pretty good. I'll stand by that. Yeah, Go ahead, Zen. Pretty, pretty good. Um, 
Is this the one where the opening goes wrong? That might have been the last episode. That was the best part of the last episode. Was it the last episode? Yes, that, 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 let's go back. Let me go back. Oh, we have to go back. That episode was such a bummer, it made me forget a really good joke. Yeah, that joke was amazing. So, um, yeah, the last episode, they have the opening and the opening fails. Yeah, and they're all, like, laying there and, like, Gintoki's scooter's on fire. And Kagura's like, oh, my God, I thought the opening was always reused footage. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was really good. It fucking it threw me really for off guard while I was watching. I was like, okay, don't what the fuck just happened? <laughs> it was really funny. Oh, it was really good. It's it's one of the, the good touches that Gintama really has is that they care a lot about their openings and EDs. And it can show because randomly you'll just be watching the OP and they'll just be like, okay, yeah, let's just fucking throw a curveball at him real quick. It's a really good uh, continuing gag, and apparently you can find this one just on YouTube, and it's literally called OP9 Failed. Someone told me that afterwards, <laughs> is that, that would, this was uploaded separately, and that, yeah, this is just called the failed version of the opening, <laughs> which is really good. So there you go. That is, that is the best part of that episode, <laughs> and it goes with, I guess, the cursed vibes of the episode as well, because it's like a cursed opening. All right, Zen, for reals this time, Prison Break. Go ahead. Yeah, so, uh... They're at, like, a brothel, and there's, like, a... A client, and like, the client won't pay, and we need you to get him to pay, but then, uh, and they're like, oh, yeah, he likes to roleplay as a guard. But then it turns out that he's not roleplaying as a guard, and he's actually a guard, and so he frames and arrests Gintoki, uh, and he's in jail, and there's this old man... And the old man's like, oh, I just write letters to my son. Um, I, I get to write letters to my son on the outside, and then uh, I'll get to uh, see my son in a week when I get off on good behavior. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. They're really laying it on thick in this one right now. Um, then Gintoki's like, hey, fine. I'll help you make it out in this week on good behavior. I won't cause any problems. But uh, in the return, I want your pudding. And then the old man, like, stabs him in the head with a fork or something. <laughs> he's like, no, not the pudding. And then they have a big fight about it. Um, and then the You're warden pays... A f- yeah, the, the warden pays a gang to, like, attack them, to force them into a prison fight. And the leader of the gang, because apparently Gintama will use every character except that friend of Gintoki's that owns the spaceship company, because he's the only one that's not allowed to show Sakamoto up. Sakamoto still not showed up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sakamoto still doesn't get to be in the show. Uh, it's fucking Shachi, Sachi, the guy from the Katsura prison episode, <laughs> that cut up his sleeves to, like, look cool. Well, yep. he's back again. Um, and Gintoki makes fun of his new fashion, which is, like, he's got, like, Napoleon shoulder pads on. Um... <laughs> And Gintoki makes fun of it, and it, like, breaks his spirit again. And he he gets all of their puddings, and they become, like, his underlings. Um, and then every time the Warden tries to, like, one-up Gintoki, Gintoki ends up winning every time, which progressively, uh, like, weakens the Warden's control. Uh, and then uh, finally he's like, listen, I'll let you out of here if you help me... Um, fuck with the old man basically so that he can't see his son i don't want him to see his son i want you to ruin that for him and then i'll let you go um and then the shashi's like oh man the they completely gave up on the prison we could we could start a riot and then gintoki's like nah if they do that everyone will get blamed i'm gonna go get the warden myself and then the episode ends yeah how'd you feel about this one son i thought it was good I liked it. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I thought the bit where Shachi comes back was fucking hilarious <laughs> when he comes back out. They even, because they didn't think you'd remember who it was, uh, I didn't until they did this either, they flash back to the Katsura episode and they show him like cutting the jagged bits of his sleeves. Yep. Uh, I thought that was super funny. Uh, I thought how they all immediately become like... He's an underling. Subservient to him, like it, 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 intensely subservient to him. Um, to the point that they're like trying to feed him the pudding. They're like, here comes the airplane. <laughs> um, Anaki, here's your pudding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought that, I thought, I thought it was funny. It was good. Yeah. 
Uh, I liked it as well. I thought it was a very good start for this one. I it's similar to you when Chachi showed up. I'm like, it's the fucking guy. <laughs> it's that yeah. guy. It's the, the fucking sleeves guy. <laughs> it's fucking sleeves guy. I remember him. It was really funny. Um, it does. It is really funny that he. Can't, I think he's actually come back before Sakamoto. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sakamoto does not get to be in the show. He does not. No. Still, uh, still not appeared once so far. I really like that bit. I like the bit where Kentucky's clearly playing him, where he says, where he starts making fun of him. First of all, the making the dress down is hilarious. When he's just like, "Oh yeah, where'd you get that X? Huh? Perfectly on your head? Did you put that in yourself?" He's like, "Yeah, no, I know, you know, I didn't put it in. I, I had a little scratch on my forehead, and that's where the X comes from." And it's very clear he put that X there on on, on himself on purpose. And he goes like, and whatever. Like, hey, did you cut the fingers off your gloves? <laughs> you have jellyfish on you. It was all really funny. It was really good. He's like, oh, do you know, you, you can just take off the gloves so they don't fit. You don't have to make holes in them. <laughs> that was his reason is that he thought the gloves didn't fit, so he had to make more uh, holes in them for the, the, to give him space. But that's not what it was at all. <laughs> I also like the bit where he's like, screw it, man, I don't need an X. It can be a semicolon, and he adds extra dots to the X. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like when his one, when his one like, underling guy was like, no, nah, come on, no, nah, your X is really cool, man. <laughs> the X really is like cool. It. The X is cool. I really <laughs> like that. He's like, no, you told me so one of my guys was laughing. Who was laughing? And then Gitoki does the ultimate, like, fucking conversation skill check 100 where he says, nah, I ain't a snitch. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> what? He's like, is he trying to protect us? And he ends up protecting them. And he goes like, you know what? Everyone close your eyes and whoever you beat up, that's who the one who was laughing. He's like, all right, you got it. And then he beats them all up. And he goes like, why did you do that? He goes like, nah, man. I know that if I had only beat one of them that uh, you would have known who it was. Now they can all share the pain. And that's when he breaks down and does the whole an- on a keep in. And he's like, he's so cool. <laughs> He tricks them. He like gaslights them so quickly in the in the single scene where he's just like, okay, the perfect perfection, and he has complete control of the prison, which really goes to show if maybe if Gintoki was actually a villain, how very easily he'd be able to take control of things because he is amazing at manipulating extremely dumb characters <laughs> into doing what he wants. But yeah, really good. Uh, I liked a lot of the bit starts here at the early. I, I think in this episode, there's one moment where it immediately made me go, I know what's going on here already. Because I was like, I know your game plan, Kintama. I know where this episode goes now. Feel free to show me the rest of this, but I already know where you're going. <laughs> and it's the bit where he's uh, the warden asks him to uh, cause a riot. At that point, I was like, okay, I think I know where this is going, but I'll see where it goes from here. So yeah, let's move on to the end of this little jail arc and go to episode 226, which is called Everybody Loves Pajamas. Go ahead, Zen. Oh, wait, there's also a really good mention where at the beginning, I forgot to mention, where when they're, because they're interviewing, they're trying to, the reason that he was even going to the warden is that they were looking for him because there's some dude who keeps like skipping out on the cosplay bar um, and that ends up being the warden. Um, he, I think at some point someone says they keep slipping out the back door and then again, tell answers back. He's like, don't worry. I'm also kind of a back door kind of person, <laughs> which I thought was a very, <laughs> very funny statement. And the first jump protagonist confirmed <laughs> to be a man who enters the back door. <laughs> Confirm, Gintoki, put it on the list. No other MC is willing to talk about which one he prefers to go by. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us episode 226, pajama, Everybody Loves Pajamas. Uh, shit's getting wild now. Um, cause the, the, it's getting tense in the prison. Uh, Gintoki goes to steal a guard uniform, but he ends up stealing guard pajamas, uh, which just look like a stereotypical like white and black striped prisoner outfit uh which just makes him more suspicious to everyone and not less um and they're like oh it'll it's fine the guards will just think i'm a guard a pajama guard and it, they actually do they're like oh okay <laughs> uh, uh, the other inmates end up taking control of the prison while kentoki and sachi are searching for information um, and they find out that the old man who's been writing the letters that his son has been dead, 
and that the warden has been the one responding to them so that the old man doesn't find out that the son died. Um, and that's why he wants to ruin his attempt to escape so that he can't go meet the son and therefore can't find out that he's dead. He always can kind of just live in like blissful ignorance or something. Mm-hmm. Um, they go down and the, the warden ends up like staying behind and he's like, I'll, I'll, the prisoners just want to kill me. You guys get away and I'll, uh, I'll hold them off. And they're like beating him to death with a pipe on the floor. It's like pretty brutal actually. Yeah. Um, and then in classic Gintama fashion, uh, Gintoki shows up at the last minute and blasts some dude through a wall as he does. <laughs> Uh, and then he's like, "All right, if any of you guys want to come after the warden, I will. I'll, I'll fight you instead." And they all kind of back down. Um, and the warden's like, "All right, I guess I have to uh, commit ritual suicide because I, I did something bad." Um, and then before that, he's like, uh, "Hey, you need to go visit the old man first since you've been acting as his son." Um, and then they he goes and like talks to the old man, and they kind of chat a little bit, and they're like, "Yeah, I, I liked your letter, and I hope that we can keep uh, writing letters like we always have, and it's very sweet." And then as Gintoki is leaving because he's been released, uh, a pudding cup is hurled over the prison wall, and he, he catches it. Yeah, and that's where it ends. Uh, how'd you feel about this one, Zen? It was good. It was cute. Uh, hmm. It I knew that I was right about there being some bullshit swerve to make you emotional, <laughs> but it was not the bullshit swerve I was expecting. I thought oh, the old really? man was going to get nixed. Uh, oh, like, really? I, th- I thought either the old man was going to die or um, there was going to be something wrong with the son. And I, I guess I was kind of right about that, but like the actual emotional bit w- ended up being like the connection between the warden and the old man that had developed over those 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, that the, the bit about the warden, like stepping in, to help the old man randomly uh, was not what I was expecting, but um, it, it was good. It was good, yeah. emotional and nice. Yeah, they do a, a good build up. You don't. It is it, it. The part where I get where I was like, I had a f- pretty good fe- feeling of it was when he was like, when Guntoki himself was kind of putting it together. Because like, why would you? It's like, you don't want him to meet his son, but yet you will happily deliver the letters to him make that make sense for me and then the warden's like trying to do a whole big evil thing of like ha i just want to break them that's what i want to do i want to play with my toy and it turns out it's like all a facade because he mentions that when he's doing his whole backstory thing when he talks about the letter the one that he gives to the old man at the end while he's getting the absolute shit wrapped out of him is that he was basically a, a nothing person and the only reason he knows how to run the jail at all is because the old man basically taught him when he first came in um So ends up painting it a little bit more understanding of like, okay, probably very likely the entire bit of him trying to be evil was all a facade. The part that wasn't him a facade was the reason that he went looking for him, which is that there was some guy dining and dashing on the sex workers, which is not cool. But (laughs) we never resolved that, which I will stay again. Pay your sex workers if you're going to use them, please. But the part here where it's like, okay, some of it is kind of a facade where he's just doing this because he knows this is the way to actually get the prisoners in line and it works until it doesn't work (laughs) until Gidoki shows up and shows that he actually isn't all that tough because in theory if the warden was actually that tough hard ass that he actually was he would have dealt with Kentoki in some kind of way and tried to beat him but he never actually tries to do that he tries to work with Gintoki instead so I think that's where they kind of show a little bits and pieces where it's like it doesn't fully um that that like the this tough guy warden act that he's built up is just an act and that's not actually what he really is though again the part that's not an act is the part that he runs away from sex workers which again not a dress but it's all right it's we're good on that it's fine um but yeah i I liked it i liked the moment where if the old man where he like says like yeah that's all i needed because he's they have like this conversation he's like you doing good you find a new job he's like no it's like okay that's all i need He's like, wait a minute, don't you want to say more? He's like, there's nothing need to, that needs to be said. This is what we always talked about in, like, our letters and stuff. And he's that's when the guy realizes that the old man has always known that the only thing that's kept him going is the warden um, himself. 
And when he asked him to keep writing letters to him, I thought it was a really nice moment. It's really funny how it was like, I thought it was a very nice little emotional moment here and a very cute story. And how much it built off of this guy being a complete asshole for an entire episode previous. <laughs> and then the next episode is like a deconstruction and they show him by getting completely like de destroyed by the prisoners and actually like not being a coward and like being like... Because the way an actual cowardly warden acts at the final end here is that he makes it so that the other prisoners get hurt or the other ones go, but that's not what he does, is that when it comes time for um, that moment, he tells them to go on, and he'll go on from that go forward. So it's kind of stuff like that that helps kind of make the character... You end up like being a little bit more understanding about him, because if they were a jerk for the previous episode, they that ass-beating that he got kind of goes like, okay, I get it. You're good. It's actually something very similar that they do at wrestling, is that <laughs> if you get a bad enough beating, people will start to cheer for you again. Yep. Um, which is funny, because it was like a report of like one wrestler. I forget who it was. That's right. I remember now. If you've ever seen <laughs> Bret Hart versus, Re versus Vince McMahon at WrestleMania, there's a part in there where the the Hart family start beating the shit out of Vince so badly he's bleeding. And the reason that it's such a one-sided beatdown is that Vince wanted people to start feeling bad for him at the end. <laughs> and it didn't work because he was a redeemable monster. <laughs> yeah, because people just hate Vince too much. Yeah, so he, he was too hated of a person, and so that beatdown wasn't succinct enough to um, fully undo all the monster shit that he did. But because of the stuff that he does in this episode, it helps kind of like lessen that a little bit. So, good stuff. Good stuff. I really liked it. Um, it. I thought it was a good end to it all with some of the little bit of the mixed bag again the beginning the, the the two after the monkey are the one where i'm just like ah, i don't know about this one um well except for matsudaira i really did like matsudaira it was really the blue and red ecstasy one was a weird way of ending the note except for the op which was very good but either way i'm glad to be back in talking with gintama with zen if anything else it's all worth it for that <laughs> Yes, finally. It's been a while. It has been far like too it's, long. But it's it's been a while. Yeah, and I enjoy talking about uh, Gintama and doing all this. So, let's talk about how we're going to handle next week. Because as far as I'm concerned, um, we're going to back here again for next week. And I think I've talked to my boss, and it doesn't sound like there's anything too crazy to stop us recording on Wednesday. So, um... This is what you can expect for next week. I believe it will be episodes 227, which is the crossover with Sket Dance. Episode 228 and 229, which is the love chur... I keep wanting to say chorizo, but it is not chorizo. It's chortis arc. Uh -huh. Excuse me, my Mexican is overcoming my ability. I see chor, and I just instantly want to say chorizo at the end. <laughs> I love Chortis arc, episode 228 and 229, and then episodes 230 and 231, which are two random episodes. Um, and so that is a total of one, two, three, four, five episodes for next week. Looking forward to it because I've only ever seen the uh, the crossover with Sket Dance is two episodes, but we have to save the other episode of that Sket Dance crossover. Because it's needed for where it is in the specific timeline of Sket Dance. Um, I, I think I've said it before. I stopped watching Sket Dance after, I think, the crossover with Sket Dance. The reason is is that um, the arc previous for it was really sad. <laughs> was unbelievable levels of sadness. And the only thing that got me out of my funk was the Gintama arc. And I said, I need to watch this when I'm in a... <laughs> Was that little Gintama crossover with humor in it was the only thing that was able to pick me up. And I said, I need to save Sket Dance for a later time, because right now, I'm not in the right headspace to be watching this. <laughs> because I was uh, dealing with a lot of stuff, so I was like, I, I can't, I literally, I can't deal with this, I can't deal. You know what, <laughs> I really like your show, but I can't fucking deal with this right now. So, thank you for the last Gintama, I will be back when I can heal it, and I was never able to get back to it. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the that episode with Zen next week um, and talking about this all this other stuff. And then finally, after that, uh, after next week, two weeks from now, is going to be the Red Hole arc, which is another big one. And Zen, 
I'm here to spoil this for you. I think he might be making a return finally. I think we're oh two. My God. I think we're two weeks away from potentially Sakamoto being a character in the oh show again. Oh my god, he's out of the OPs. <laughs> he might escape the OPs. I don't know much. I remember seeing in Crunchyroll little bits of Sakamoto in it, so that means that there might actually be legitimate the episodes featuring Sakamoto at some point. <laughs> so look forward to that. Uh, I definitely am. So... Let's do some cleanup now. Where can you find more Zen if you want more Zen? You can go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill, where I believe they talk about Kagurabachi and then talk about why aren't these Shonen <laughs> Jump and uh, Manga's ending. <laughs> I believe that is the current state of Shonen Jump. How's, uh, how's Shonen Jump feeling like, Zen? How's it going? Uh, Kagurabachi Jump, you mean? Yeah, Kagurabachi Jump, excuse me. The, the goat? The absolute the, legend, yeah. The house that Kagurabachi uh, built. Thanks. The rest is like okay, I guess. Yeah, I heard that the Tokyo Revengers guy is getting a uh, a new manga in there. Did it debut yet? Uh, yeah, I think it just did. It okay. Just, what's the guy's name? I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. I just remember him as the guy who made Tokyo Revengers. Um, he has a very specific art style, though, so I'm able to find it from there. Let me see if I can very quickly use uh, Astro Royal. Uh, that's Royale. A, is that's the a, author's name Ken Wakui? The, the Astro Royale is a baller ass name. If that is his legit name, but I think that might be uh, the series name. The series is called Astro oh, Royale. For a second there, I thought you said the guy's name was Astro Royale. Oh, I was the like, author is Ken Wakui. Okay, <laughs> I was about to say Astro Royale is a fucking baller ass name. <laughs> Okay, Ken, Ken Wakui, yeah, I heard that it was debuting, and uh, I'm kind of interested in that, even though I was never able to actually get into Tokyo uh, Revengers. It did seem kind of up my alleys, because it's a bunch of um, uh, Yakuza punks and stuff like that. So, you know, stuff, eventually they have to bring in new new blood to get rid of the old blood that is currently drying up on the, <laughs> on the floor of Shonen Jump magazine. As we get closer to the end of all things. So yeah, go check out Zen's channel for more of that. For more Shonen and Chillin. For more your your one-stop place for all Kagurabachi news and talkings about. <laughs> I swear one day I am going to show up on Shonen Archive and say I have actually watched it. I need, to, I need to read the manga before we start talking about the anime, obviously. Because we'll talk about that when it comes out. So you can have another excuse to talk about Kagurabachi. <laughs> Uh, as for me, if you want more me, you can simply follow the channel. Um, by the time you read this, I think three videos are going to be going up because it's my birthday and I think I need to release Shonen Archive. I have another video planned out, which is going to be, uh, me playing another, uh, uh, every time it's my birthday, I usually play a game from my childhood that I really like or is one of the games that I really love. And I think for this year, I've decided it's going to be Toy Story 2 for the N64. <laughs> uh, because back in the day, before I had a memory card for the N64... The, no, Toy Story 2 required a very specific memory card in um, the N64 to save. So I couldn't save it on the N64. So oh, that's brutal. It is. So what I did is that anytime I wanted to play Toy Story 2, I beat it in a single sitting. So <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> I beat it all. Whenever I wanted to see the future levels, I would have to eventually learn to beat it in a day. Uh, I don't think I can beat it. I think I eventually got it to the point where I could beat it in maybe four hours, which is like baby speed run, maybe tactics time. But this that was me trying to get like absolutely everything in the game. So I'm looking forward to kind of checking it out. It is a game that me and my siblings still quote to each other um, because it has really good quotes in it, such as Mr. Pig going, Buzz! Buzz over here! Buzz! <laughs> and that's the entirety of Toy Story 2 and how you find other characters up there. So look forward to that. There might be another Fago video because there's a lot of crazy stuff happening around Fago time around this year. So I might have to release something like that. So plenty of videos featuring me out there. And then I have to also remember to release the uh, Sonic Adventure stuff with uh, where we recorded with Knuckles. That still has to come out at some point. I'll figure out when to release that. I want to release it closer to when we're going to be recording Big and Amy so I have a good batch of them just ready to go out at once as we get ready to finally beat Sonic Adventure and end the Sonic Adventure itself. What a fun-ass series that we've had <laughs> featuring both of us. Uh, 
especially that Knuckles video <laughs> where we were doing Knuckles story. That was a fun time. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was super fun where he just like kept nuking levels in two seconds. And we were like, huh. <laughs> yeah, where my, my brother showed it and showed us what the fuck was up and started playing Knuckles like crazy. Beating it in stages in like an entire minute, it was uh great. And then there was also, of course, a bunch of other stuff in there. <laughs> I looked it up. That was my slowest pace. He says he looked it up. That was the slowest pace he's ever had for knuckle stuff. My brother Man. treats this Sonic shit like it's real. You know what we should have done is hmm. we should have had you play a story for however many episodes it takes, and then have him do it right afterward, where we just commentate him <laughs> doing it. And we measure the time difference for each character story. Oh god, you're just gonna try and show me up. I don't want to show everyone. <laughs> I only re I only upload videos where I'm beating my brothers in, such as the Naruto Clash of the Ninja <laughs> Two video. <laughs> where <laughs> where else? Shut up, boy. No one has seen. No one's seen that Billy Hatcher video, <laughs> so they're not gonna know how badly you beat me at Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. <laughs> um. That video is somewhere out there, I think, as well. So, yeah, we should have done that. I, th that was always my our plan for playing Sonic Frontiers, is that my brother just plays it in the background while we commentate over it, because he actually... I love that. I, I enjoy just watching Sonic gameplay, and I think it would be very funny to commentate over it. We could. I mean, he's uh, very good at it, I'll say that much. He's better at Sonic than it is for me. But there is a joy to seeing me uh, play Sonic when I'm playing it badly, at least for the 2D ones. For the 3D ones, I'm good enough that <laughs> I'm not sure how uh, yeah, enjoyable well, see, the, With the 3D ones, you're like that medium level of good where you're like competent. Yes. Uh, the 2D ones are the best, though, because you just look like you've never held a game controller in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very bad at the 2D Sonics. I, I, they, they confuse me. They confound me. I, it's like my inner Mario blood going into me saying, like, no, you must trash these games. You must be terrible at these games. <laughs> it refuses to hold back. I can't do it. I don't know what's up. It's a problem with my brain. I'm just bad. Uh, maybe at some point we got to return to the 2D Sonics as well. But we'll see. That's all the stuff that's currently going on. We hope to see you guys next week. As always, if you want to show support for Shonen Archive, the best way to do that is to just watch it to be honest leave a comment you never have to worry too much about the show going anywhere because as long as me and zen are around we will continuously record shonen archive and as long as i have Fago videos i always have a main supporter of the channel <laughs> that lets it grow so it allows me to do videos like this no problem so but yeah the best way to actually show support is leaving likes and watching so that's the end of shonen archive everyone i'm woki and uh, it's time for you to say goodbye, Zen. I don't have an outro for Shonen Archive. <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Peace out. We need. I need. I need something like uh, an actual ending for Shonen Archive. Uh, if only I could figure it out. There's no good way of saying like Archive ended. Maybe I'll have a giant gunshot go through, and I said that that Shonen's been archived, <laughs> and that's how we ended from now. On. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> All right, we'll start doing that. The Shonen just been archived. Gunshot. The shonen has been archived. And then do the yeah. What, what is that from? What the, the, the yeah. That, the, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. We can't do that because then my video goes down because of monetization. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, but I could definitely put in the good shot. <laughs> there we go. Enjoy that ending, everyone. I'm still recording. Till next time, everyone. Goodbye. Shonen archived. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.